Historic town hall meetings will get underway in Arcata, California. 61% of Arcadans voted in favor of publicly discussing whether democracy is even possible when large corporations wield so much wealth and power under law. They also voted to form a committee to ensure democratic control over corporations in Arcata. Corporations are not accountable to the democratic process. That's what this is about. I don't want to make decisions about everything that goes on in their corporation, but I do have a strong belief that they need to be held accountable to us. If we don't like certain product, if we don't like uh, Pepsi Cola or Bank of America, or if you don't like what they do, don't use them. That's the way I see the you know, people's power is. You have a lot more money than me. You have more votes than I do. If we use the model of boycott and voting with your dollars, that's, a, that's an undemocratic situation. What are we afraid of? I mean, are all the businesses going to leave Arcata? I don't think so. And if they did, we deal with it, or we figure it out, or we do something different. We're creative people. I just don't see why we're afraid. If you think it's tough making a decision where to buy your stuff today, how tough do you think it is when there's only one provider, and it's the state? And by the way, you don't get to have this little democracy forum in those communities either. People that say they fear their government, I really hope that they understand that they're allowed to participate in their government. They're not allowed to participate in anything the corporations do. So don't fear the government. Help it be the government that you won't fear. If this many people around the country would do this instead of watching Super Bowl Sunday, our nation would be controlled by the people, not by the corporations. No more chain restaurants in Arcata after a long-awaited decision. past decade, we have been gaining ground. And when I say we, I mean ordinary people committed to the welfare of all of humanity, all people irrespective of gender and class and race and religion, all species on the planet. We managed to take the biggest government and one of the largest chemical companies to court on the case of Neem and win a case against them. W.R. Grace and the U.S. government's patent on Neem was revoked by a case we brought along with the Greens of European Parliament and the International Organic Agriculture Movement. We won because we worked together. We have overturned nearly 99% of the Basmati patent of rice tech. Again, because we worked as a worldwide coalition. Old women in Texas, scientists in India, activists sitting in Vancouver, a little Basmati action group. We stopped the third world being viewed as the pirate, and we showed the corporations were the pirate. Look how little it took for Gandhi to work against the salt laws of the British, where the British decided the way they would make their armies and police forces bigger is just tax the salt. And all that Gandhi did was walk to the beach, pick up the salt, and say, nature gives it for free. We need it. We've always made it. We will violate your laws. We will continue to make salt. We've had a similar commitment for the last decade in India that any law that makes it illegal to save seed is a law not worth following. We will violate it because saving seed is a duty to the earth and to future generations. We thought it would really be symbolic. It is more than symbolic. It is becoming a survival option. Farmers who grow their own seeds, save their own seeds, don't buy pesticides, have threefold more incomes than farmers who are locked into the chemical treadmill, depending on Monsanto and Cargill. We have managed to create alternatives that work for people. There are many tools for, for bringing back community. But the importance is not the tools. I mean, there's litigation, there's legislation, there's direct action, there's education, boycotts, social investment. There's many, many ways to, uh, to address issues of corporate power. But in the final analysis, what's really important is the vision. You have to have a better story. Do I know you well enough to call you fellow plunderers? There is not an industrial company on Earth 
not an institution of any kind, not mine, not yours, not anyone's, that is sustainable. I stand convicted by me, myself alone, not by anyone else, as a plunderer of the earth, but not by our civilization's definition. By our civilization's definition, I'm a captain of industry, in the eyes of many a kind of modern-day hero, but really, really, the first industrial revolution is flawed, it is not working, it is unsustainable, it is the mistake. And we must move on to another and better industrial revolution and get it right this time. When I think of what could be, I visualize an organization of people committed to a purpose. And the purpose is doing no harm. I see a, a company that has severed the umbilical cord to earth for its raw materials, taking raw materials that have already been extracted and using them over and over again, driving that process with renewable energy. It is our plan, it remains our plan to climb Mount Sustainability, that mountain that's higher than Everest, infinitely higher than Everest, far more difficult to scale. That point at the top symbolizing zero footprint. So we've got to undo a lot of things in order to be smart enough to do this really dangerous and risky and difficult work, you know, uh, the best way that, that we possibly can. And that, that means people coming together and learning a whole, whole, lot, whole lot of stuff that we just don't know, that has been driven out of the culture, driven out of the society, driven out of our minds. That, to me, is the most exciting thing. That is happening. It's happening all over the world now. In cierto momento de la lucha, el momento más culminante, el ejército se eh, acuarteló, la policía también no salió de su, de su cuartel, los congresistas desaparecieron, el gobernador se ocultó, se denunció al gobernador, no había autoridad legal, la única autoridad legítima era el pueblo que estaba en un cabildo, que estaba en la plaza y que tomaba las decisiones en grandes asambleas y al final decidió sobre el agua. Y creo que la gente, eh, los jóvenes y los viejos de mucho tiempo eh, pudimos eh, saborear, digamos, pudimos eh, saciarnos de esa sed de democracia. ¡Y así lo hemos conseguido, compañeros! Hemos heredado una empresa, como toda empresa pública, con problemas técnicos, con problemas financieros, con problemas legales y con problemas administrativos. Eh, los estamos enfrentando. Porque si demostramos que es la gente sencilla y trabajadora la que puede dar solución a sus problemas, podemos estar a las puertas de pedir de que todo aquello que se privatizó, todo aquello que se vendió, todo aquello que está en manos de las corporaciones, vuelvan a las manos de la población. Y ahí, me, ahí aprendí una lección muy importante, de que uno no puede desconfiar en la capacidad del pueblo. Un eslogan que siempre yo había repetido en las, en las marchas, de que el pueblo unido jamás será vencido. Y ver eso para mí fue muy grandioso. Sometimes it surprises me how effective you can actually be. After we beat the gap, I'd walk past these gap stores and I look at them and I think, my God, there's like 2,000 inch stores across the country. Look at all that concrete. Look at the glass. Look at all the staff people. Look at all the clothing. Look at that power. You can still reach these companies. You can still have an effect. Yo creo que sí hemos ganado, se están ganando pequeñas batallas en el mundo. Pero yo creo que la gente está perdiendo la guerra 
En eso sí, yo veo el, el futuro, el presente y el futuro para nuestros hijos muy oscuro. Pero confío en la capacidad de reflexión, en la capacidad de indignación y en la capacidad de rebelión de la gente. We can change the government. That's the only way we're going to redesign, rethink, reconstitute what capital and property can do. Fifteen corporations would like to control the conditions of our life. And millions of people are saying, not only do we not need you, we can do it better. We are going to create systems that nourish the earth and nourish human beings. And these are not marginal experiments. They are the mainstay of large numbers of communities across the world. That is where the future lies. You know, I've often thought it's very ironic that I'm able to do all this, and yet what am I on? I'm on networks, I'm distributed by studios that are owned by large corporate entities. Now, why would they put me out there when I am opposed to everything that they stand for? And I spend my time on their dime opposing what they believe in, okay? Well, it's because they don't believe in anything. They put me on there because they know that there's millions of people that want to see my film or watch the TV show, and so they're going to make money. And I've been able to get my stuff out there because I'm driving my truck through this incredible flaw in capitalism, the greed flaw, the thing that says the rich man will sell you the rope to hang himself with if he thinks he can make a buck off it. Well, I'm the rope. I hope. I'm part of the rope. And uh, they also believe that when people watch my stuff or maybe watch this film or whatever, they think that, you know, well, you know what, they'll watch this and they won't do anything, you know, because we've done such a good job of numbing their minds and dumbing them down. Uh, you know, they'll never affect it. The people aren't going to leave the couch and go and do something political. They're convinced of that. I'm convinced of the opposite. I'm convinced that a few people are going to leave this movie theater or get up off the couch and go and do something, anything, to get this world back in our hands.